This team used to get all the time all lays on PvP, but right now it doesn't, and that's mainly because that the meta has been shifted a little bit, and of course we have new move additions coming up towards this season. Uh, so let's see what we have here because the Oxys is gonna lead effectively, and we do not have Psycho Boost at all. So there is no bad moveset for the Oxys. You can always play it with whatever moveset you want to. Counter, of course, you cannot avoid that, and the other three moves are all viable. So feel free to experiment on whatever suits you the best But this is the one that I want to run One that doesn't have Psycho Boost at all Anyways, we're gonna fall down here to this Bastion with our Knock Tower And seeing that Torterra makes me think that At the back there has to be a second Razor Leafer Most probably a Pokemon like Shadow Victory Bell uh, So at this point I want to preserve my Deoxys for the endgame And as it seems we were right Because we might not run Psycho Boost on our Deoxys But everyone else can just assume that we do So so with that in mind, we're just gonna keep going here pressuring for those shields. I think that a Leaf Tornado can be kinda deadly for us, but still we can pressure for back-to-back -back Rock Slides. Not gonna go here for the Earthquake because I have a feeling that if they shield we might be in deep trouble, but if they let go my Rock Slide, I can still reach to another run and perhaps another one for my uh, Deoxys this time, and we can definitely finish off this Victory Bell, and of course uh, the Bastion will follow the same fate taking. Uh, super effective damage, double super effective from those counters. Into the next one now, with a decent lead against this uh, Stunfisk, but of course Stunfisk can beat us down if they want to. However, this trainer decides to switch out to the Jellicent, and seeing the Jellicent coming in super easy makes me think that whatever there is at the back might be a Wolverine or a second Ghost type Pokemon. So with that in mind now, we're just gonna keep going here with our Noctowl, and of course I have the upper hand because we are part normal, resisting those Hexes by a lot. We also managed to get super low so that this Stunfisk will not farm a lot of energy but still they are gonna get to at least one rock slide worth of energy for sure. Uh, so before we feign, to my surprise we still managed to get to a sky attack for decent damage and now the, the Oxys can go in and of course we can let anything uh, go through over here. It is gonna be the Earthquake, at the back there is a Mandibus so no wall rain, no ghost type, instead just a Mandibus and we can keep going here with our Stunfisk. So Stunfisk Fisk is an absolute beast for the meta, I like it more as a closer to be honest and with this team you can make the best out of it on that closing part. Uh, so those foul plays are gonna add up in damage over time, but still as long as we have the upper hand with the shields, I feel kinda comfortable that my Deoxys will most likely destroy down my opponent. Uh, so right here we can still let that next one go through. Uh, without uh, being in a difficult position against this opponent because we still have those rock slides which can just connect for super effective damage on the Mandibus. I might want to switch out right after to my Deoxys because we're getting super close to another rock slide, a rampage of attacks with back to back uh, battles over here and now the Stunfisk will have nothing to throw at us, we got two shields, they have zero but of course we're not gonna throw either because the counters are more than enough to farm it down. Into the next one now with the need to win up on the lead. So how I want to play this when I do not have Psycho Boost is to charge up to 10 of those counters and then try uh, to bait with a potential uh, Thunderbolt but still the opponent here decides to go out to that uh, need to win and of course seeing that makes me think that we might actually have the upper hand since a Noctowl can go in pretty rough up against them. So they were trying to catch one move, one Psycho Boost on the Umbreon, this is not gonna work and now we can pressure a lot with Noctowl and the Sky Attacks. Here comes the second Sky attack and they're getting super low so they are kind of obliged in using some of their shields and here comes now another foul play are you kidding me this pokemon is super spammy also trying to catch one move on their nidoqueen you know what i don't care at all now I can go in with my stunfisk and i know that even if they get to the earth power there is no way that they can get to two before i reach to my earthquake uh, so here comes the move i'm just gonna let that go through it all depends now on what they have as their third pokemon uh, so here comes the Earthquake, big damage on the Nido, almost down they go, and they just happen to have an Obstagoon, no Rock Slide at all in the process, so we are looking at a pretty bad scenario for us. However, this Obstagoon might be dark, but also it is normal, meaning that those counters are dealing double super effective damage. So they have two Dark type Pokemon, we have the Shield Advantage, but also we have a Psychic type Pokemon, which means that we might be in deep trouble overall. So we're kind of obliged in using our final shield here and of course now it's all it's all up to the obstagoon in order to destroy us 
down so here comes the knight slash we cannot catch on the knocked owl but instead we can tank the move and still gonna deliver the finishing farm down uh, so against Sableye up on the lead, this is the most horrible one that you can get uh, because this Pokemon is pretty amazing against any Psychic type 1 and of course we're just gonna switch out into our Noctowl. Perhaps that was a mistake, perhaps we needed to switch out to Stunfisk for this battle but I don't mind at all because we can still uh, use Stunfisk for the end game against the Sableye and who knows, perhaps we can win this all around. So here comes now the Shadow Ball for big damage on that Bacedon and I will just stop hitting my opponent decides to do the same and yeah done we go in the process uh, so all I want to do here is to go in now with the Deoxys, uh, tank those moves, I don't care what they might throw uh, since I can easily farm down and I'm expecting that Sebeli to come back into the battle. Just gonna throw the rock slide here and at this point I can switch out to my Stunfisk. Uh, we're gonna put them at a weird position that a rock slide might just be enough to finish them off but also uh, it will leave them with a little bit of HP left I'm pretty sure about because uh, one rock slide deals about 40-45% of the total HP from a Sableye and that's why they can survive so here comes now the rock slide already on the red they're getting super low and at the back they have a red steel the battle is not over yet all we have to do is to land one big earthquake but they manage to block you know what I am just gonna block as well so here comes the focus blast not gonna risk it at all and right after I will reach to my own up to my own earthquake for once more uh, so this is gonna do a lot of damage but they managed to block and we want to catch the focus blast on the deoxys doing so gives us the edge but unfortunately we have a high defense and very low HP on our deoxys which means that those locons can easily farm us down this is pretty interesting to observe and now Sebele returns and unfortunately Unfortunately, we cannot farm down. So you can see that even against the worst lead, worst counter at the back, we can still have a chance at winning. Even though we didn't, that was a pretty close battle overall. And if mistakes weren't made, well, we could have had the upper hand, especially against the red steel, if we could go against it at least with one bait, one rock slide instead of an earthquake, sacrificing all that energy. Uh, so with that in mind now, let's see what we have for the next battle, because they managed to catch one thunderbolt on the leaky tank. I was expecting the to be honest but still they caught me off guard which is pretty nice for them uh, so this best body uh, league tank is just gonna dominate here with those body slams but of course my normal typing can absolutely do a lot of work against those leaks resisting them by a lot and of course we can take advantage of that able to over farm to a point that even if the medicine returns they cannot farm, farm us down without sacrificing one or two shields uh, we're gonna see the Bacidon coming in, which is a pretty solid option up against our Noctowl. So seeing that makes me think that I need to switch out immediately to my Deoxys. Doing so, I'm not expecting them to uh, completely switch out immediately to the Medsum, but instead they want to sacrifice a little bit of their HP in order to sacrifice some of our energy in return. And as it seems, this is gonna work to some point, but not that much. Anyways, we have now the upper hand because uh, we can go in with a Noctowl and with that switch that we did before we now have aligned our Pokemon differently and our Stunfisk now can face this Bacidon with this. I'm just gonna block because I know that this Medicham needs to be taken out as soon as possible and we are already there for the Sky Attack to deliver the finishing blow on that Pokemon. Bacidon now stands no chance at all and they're getting out of the way as soon as they see my Stunfisk. Into the next one now with a Registeel up on the lead. Obviously this is gonna be a very good lead for us and of course we need to switch out at some point to Noctowl since we're seeing Jellicent. I will always try to catch one move when I'm seeing a Jellicent coming in up against my uh, my Deoxys here uh, so with that in mind I'm just gonna try to catch the Shadow Ball we can do that successfully and of course now those serves will be uh, not that much of a big threat to my Pokemon. I was hoping to get the knockout here but they managed to survive to my surprise and still reach to a serve. You know what what I want to do here is to make them use the energy that they have now on the red steel they are not there yet but obviously they're gonna get to their next charge attack fairly fast and i have a feeling that they want to go for the over farm so that's why i'm going also for the over farm uh, because i want to make them throw that energy and with that in mind now i can safely go in with my deoxys and start doing some solid work up against them not gonna reveal yet my rock slide just gonna go straight for those thunderbolts 
and as it seems we can block the next move and completely farm down. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw here the rock slide since I was not debuffed by this up cannon and they end up having a Trevenant. So now Trevenant with uh, uh, the recent nerf on the energy side of Seed Bomb because the damage is uh, been uh, a little bit higher than it used to be. Uh, it is not that common to see a Trevenant at all but by blocking here the Shadow Ball we can have the upper hand even against the Pokemon like Trevenant. Uh, so Shadow Ball now is gonna connect for big damage but we don't care because they are already below 50% and of course a double rock slide will take the shield and the Trevenant out of the way. Uh, with that in mind now, all we have to do is to return to the battle with the Deoxys and we can just uh, destroy them down with those counters. Into the final one now trainers and we're having kind of a bad lead against the Shadow Swambert. If they want to, they can definitely outspeed us at any uh, point of this battle and absolutely destroy us down. Uh, what I want to do here is to charge up to a 10th uh, or the 11th uh, counter so that I can have back to back Psycho Boost for sure and then try to unleash the power at there. Them. <clears throat> this way we can definitely take at least one shield out of this uh, Swambert and as it seems it worked because now they are uh, without energy at all, they have sacrificed one shield and things are working towards my side because Noctowl can go in, immediately farm down and at the back they have the Regi still. So uh, even though we had the upper hand at some point, immediately by seeing the Regi still here makes me think that we do not have it and I will just tank one Zap Cannon to my Noctowl and then rely on my uh, Stunfisk over here to destroy them down. So as it seems at the back there is gonna be a Sableye and I want to go ahead and pressure so much for that potential shield. And as it seems though my opponent has the upper hand here because they can make the calls to block or not. So I'm just gonna go now for the Earthquake trying to snipe them down. We can absolutely do it at the back now. They return for the second time with a Red Steel and I will try to catch one move on my Noctowl. I know that the battle is is not over yet, they know how to play this one, so I can still keep going here with all that energy to pressure for the shield. Doing so, I can have the upper hand with the sky attack, but at the last second they farm it down, and at the even more last second I can reach to the rock slide to deliver the finishing blow against this trainer, and that's gonna be a great game to end this video. So that is gonna be all for today trainers, just be sure to leave a huge like before you go, and please consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more of my my content. With that said, I have two videos for you to check out, so feel free to do so, and I will see you all into the next one.